بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Okay, so uh, Sheikh, a question is asked <clears throat> on the Islamic ruling on celebrating the Mawlid and Nabi, like the birthday of Prophet Islam. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam, ala ashraf al-anbiya, khatim al-nabi'een, wa ala alihi wa sahabiya jama'een, amma ba'd. It's a great question. And we see a lot of doubts and, and shabuhat that have been put around this question. So let's take it in logical order. Okay, the first thing, anytime you want to know the Islamic ruling on anything, the first place we look is the Quran itself. In the Quran, by the ijma, by the consensus of the Sahaba who explain the Quran, we do not find any narration from any Sahabi that any ayah in the Quran refers to Mawlid al-Nabi. So what does that mean? That there is no proof from the Quran regarding the Mawlid the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not about when he was born exactly, not about celebrating that birth, not in the Quran. Tayyib, now we go to the Ahadith. The second place we look for evidence is the Ahadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the Ahadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we do not find any reference to celebrating his birth. And, and we have to think about this. Why? That means the 12th of Rabi al-Awwal, came upon Rasulullah some 63 times in his life, from his birth till his death. He died in, in Rabbil Awal as well. So, we, if any time during that lifetime, before prophethood, after prophethood, in Mecca, in Medina, Rasulullah could have told the Sahaba that this is the, the date of my birth, celebrate it, throw a party, have an Eid. Rasulullah showed us how to celebrate in Islam. He taught us about Eid al-Adha, he taught us about Eid al-Fitr. He even told us about Jum'ah being the Eid of the week, even though it's not like Eid al-Adha or Eid al-Fitr like once a year. But he explained these days of celebration. But he did not, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell us to celebrate on the 12th or the 10th or the 9th of Rabi al-Awwal or even tell us what date he was born. Rather, he told us the day and we'll talk about that inshaAllah. Tayyib. So in the ahadith of Rasulullah Sallam, we do not find any proof for celebrating Mawlid al-Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, who loved Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the most? The Sahaba radiallahu anhu. Aisha radiyanha, Abu Bakr radiyanhu, Umar, Uthman, Ali, Hassan, Hussein radiallahu anhu. None of them celebrated the Mawlid. And if this was something good, you would think, that Aisha radiyanha or Abu Bakr or Umar or Uthman or Ali, any one of them would have celebrated it radiyallahu anhum, but they did not. We do not find a single Sahabi celebrating Mawlid al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Tayyib, who is the best of this ummah, from the ulema of this ummah, the great imma, Abu Hanifa and Malik and Shafi and Ahmad, may Allah be pleased with all of these great scholars of Islam, none of them celebrated Mawlid. None of them. We challenge anybody to bring a single one of the four famous a'imma or any of the scholars of the first three generations. The entire Muslim ummah in the best generation, the generation of the Sahaba, the Tabi'un and Taba Tabi'un did not celebrate Al-Mawlid. Imam Tajuddin Al-Fakihani Al-Maliki, the famous Maliki scholar, he clearly wrote that we do not find evidence in the Quran or in the Sunnah or in the Salaf of this ummah for the Mawlid al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Tayyib, so now a question is asked, where did the Mawlid come from? And if we didn't have it in the earlier generations, where did it come from? According to the ijma' of the ulema who researched this issue, they have put that this began in the 6th century, around 500 something Hijri, in the Batani Shi'i Misr. Yani when Misr was being ruled by the Fatimids, the Batani Ismaili Shi'a, who were called Ubadiyya, they are the ones who initiated this practice. For 600 years almost in the Ummah, this was not known. But these Shia, they are the ones that initiated this. And then it, it, it spread in other parts of the Ummah through Sufis and others, but this is where it started. So anybody who celebrates this is not following the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu or the Sahaba radiallahu anhu or Abu Hanifa or Malik or Shafi or Ahmad or any of these great imma. They are following something that was initiated by Ismaili, Rafida, those that were from the Bataniya sect, the misguided sect of it, in, that deviated from Islam. Tayyip, 
we get a, a, a question then. People say, okay, it's not in the hadith, it's not. And some people try to misquote a hadith. They say, for example, Rasulullah some said about fasting on Mondays, that this is the day that I was born. Okay. This hadith, when we take it, first thing, it's not the only thing Rasulullah mentioned. He mentions that he was born on Monday and the wahi began on Monday. Right? But he does not say, this is why I fast. He gave a sifa of the day of Monday. He didn't say which date, the 10th or 11th or 8th or 12th or Rabbi Lawal. He just mentioned the day. But what is the reason for fasting in Jamia Tirmidhi, in hadith number 747, in the Sahih hadith, Rasulullah said that the deeds are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Monday and Thursday. So this is the reason. I like that my deeds be presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state that I am fasting. So he mentioned different things that happen on Monday, including the beginning of Wahi, and different things that happen on Thursday. In other ahadith, he talked about the day of Jum'ah and, and the significance, but he didn't say that's why he fasted. He fasted because as he mentioned himself, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he wanted his deeds presented to Allah subhanahu wa taala in a state of fasting. Tayyib, even if you say, okay, on Monday he fasted, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Tayyib, we agree with this. Let's fast on Mondays. How do you take fasting on Mondays and transform it into a yearly party <laughs> on the twelfth of Rabi'ul Awwal? Tayyib, Rasulullah sallam didn't even tell us when he was born. The ulema of Islam have different opinions. Some said 8th, some said 9th, some said 10th, some said 12th, some said 13th of Rabi'ul Awwal. The original Mawlid was celebrated on the 13th of Rabi'ul Awwal because they didn't know. Yani if this was something that important that there was reward in, then no doubt Rasulullah would have told us the date to celebrate it. What did the Prophet tell us? Fast on Mondays. Let's fast on Mondays. Fast on Thursdays. Let's fast on Thursdays. Three days a month. Let's fast those days. Six days of Shawwal. Let's fast those days. You can't take that. Rasulullah said fasting six days of Shawwal. This will be as if you fasted the whole year with Ramadan. This means we're going to throw parties in Shawwal. Huh? I mean, this is to change the religion. Tayyib, another uh, shak and shubha that people put forward. People say, okay, Rasulullah did not fast the Mawlid, did not celebrate the Mawlid. The Sahaba did not celebrate the Mawlid. The, the Tabi'un and, and the great generation did not. But what's wrong with it? Nothing wrong with it. It's just so, it's something that you get more reward of. They call it a bidal hasana. If there is anything that will get you closer to Jannah or take you away from the hellfire or get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet showed it to us. Why do I say that? Because the Sahih hadith, and this is in different rawayat, Ibn Abi Shayba and others have it, and Al Hakim and his Mustadrak, the Prophet told him, Ma min shay'in yuqarribukum min al Jannah. What did Rasulullah tell us? That there is nothing that will get you closer to Jannah or take you away from a nar except that I ordered you with it. طيب. Another hadith Rasulullah told us وَلَيْسَ شَيْءٍ يُقَرِّبُكُمْ مِنَ النَّارِ وَيُبَعِدُكُمْ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ إِلَّا نَحَتُكُمْ بِهِ That there is nothing that will take you to the nar or take you away from the Jannah, except that I or that I forbid you from it. Rasulullah sallam in another hadith, he told us that ma taraktu amarin yuqarribukum bi Allah, and we did I did not leave anything that can get you closer to Allah illa amartakum bihi, except that I ordered you with it. Okay, what do we get from these hadith? There is no good deed in Islam except that Rasulullah sallam ordered. There is no sin except that he forbid us from it. Now. People say, okay, there is no reward in it, but we just want to have a party. No, because this is a part of the religion. You are tying it to the religion. And Rasulullah warned us that Kullu that, that, He told us every bid'ah is a misguidance. And every misguidance takes you to the fire. And Sahih Muslim, authentic hadith. Tayyib, now another shak comes, another, another doubt people put forward. They tell us, okay, you say this is bid'ah because Rasulullah didn't do it, Sahaba didn't do it, Tabi'un didn't do it, your, 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 your phone's a bid'ah, your watch is a bid'ah, your car is a bid'ah. That's ignorance, right? Because we don't say wearing a watch gets you closer to Allah, that there is reward in a watch, or if you get an iPhone or a Samsung, it's going to be better, there's going to be more reward in this or that. No, those are things of dunya, Ada, the regular things in life. We don't have to give proof for that. 
But if you tie anything to the religion, if you say this is haram in Islam, then there is proof. If you this is fard, this is wajib, this is mustahab, there is reward. It gets you closer to Allah, then you have to have proof. Tayyib, another doubt people put forward. They say, okay, what about the Quran? It was not compiled as a book in the lifetime of Rasulullah sallallahu or development of the ilm of jarh wa ta'deel and these things. These are again, they're trying to play with the religion. Tayyib, the Quran or Taraweeh and Jama'ah, all these things were established in the lifetime of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu explained the Quran from Fatiha to Naz, gave the tartib, and it was written down on bones, on pieces of leather during the lifetime of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Abu Bakr Radiyan, in the first year of the death of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, during his Khilafah, which only lasted two years and a few months, he compiled the Quran as a book. Tayyib. So from the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's established. Rasulullah Sallallahu prayed Taraweeh and Jama'ah during his life. Tayyib. And whatever the Sahaba, the Khulafa did, we take as a proof. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ told us, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnat al Khulafa, Rashidin al Mahdiin. Upon you is the obedience to my Sunnah and the Sunnah of the Khulafa who were rightly guided. Tayyib. Now, if Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, Hassan, Hussein, Muawiyah, radiallahu anhum, any of those Sahaba, if they celebrated the Mawlid, we would accept it as well. Like the compiling of the Quran, like Taraweeh and Jama'ah, because all of that is from the Khulafa, and all of that has its essence from the lifetime of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There is no ibadah that we have in Islam except that it's established from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or from the Sahaba radhiyallahu anhum. Tayyib. Last people tell us, what's what's the harm in it? It's okay. We're just throwing a party. People are remembering Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We say the harm in it is you are calling towards bid'ah, and innovation. And no matter how good it seems to you, no matter how it makes you feel, we know that Rasulullah sallallahu has told us, Kullu bidatun dalala. That every bid'ah is a dalala. It's a misguidance. When kullu dalala fin nar, and every dalala, every misguidance leads you into the fire. So those who call towards mawlid are calling towards a bid'ah, towards a misguidance, and they're calling people toward the nar. And those who knowing these proofs continue to do this, they are sending themselves in the nar because this is what the Prophet ﷺ has told us. Tayyip. Last, nowadays you have this new trick. They say, okay, we're not doing Mawlid, but on the 12th of Rabi al-Awwal, we're going to have a Sira conference, or on the 10th, or on the 8th. We're going to have a, a sit-down to talk about Rasulullah ﷺ. Why wouldn't you do that all year round? This is the trick of the Yahud, where when they were told not to fish on Saturdays, they put their nets on Fridays and took them out on Sundays. They think they can trick Allah. Na'udhu Billah. You cannot trick Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot justify this bid'ah. This, if you want to do a conference on the seerah, or you want to do durus on the seerah, do them all year round, do them any time in the year. If you specify, you make khas on a date, because you see there is a different virtue, meaning the birth of Rasulullah on that date, and you make that specific, this becomes a bid'ah, and this is again rejected in Islam. Man amala amalan laysa fi amruna, fa huwa rad. As the Hayt in Sahih Muslim from Aisha the Rajanha, Rasulullah SAW told us that whoever does an action that is not from, the, is from this religion, then it is rejected. So such tricks are also rejected. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from these bid'at, from these innovations. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those that truly love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa by following his sunnah in our day, in our night, in our salah, in our dealings from being from those that, that bring that love of Rasulullah sallallahu into our lives, into our daily lives, and not from those who make a bid'ah once a year to be their only form of love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa jazakumullahu khairan.